Hello everyone, I am Bairam Shahesh Kodra, a third year PhD student at the Free University of Bolzano. Today I am happy to present to you our work on flexible carbon nanotube based electrolyte gated field effect transistors for spermidine detection. <clears throat> During this presentation, I would give you a brief introduction on spermidine and electrolyte gated field effect transistors, continuing with the fabrication and characterization of our uh, sensors, results and discussion, and finally, conclusions. One may ask why biogenic amine detection? Biogenic amines <coughs> are well-known food bond toxicants. These volatile amines compounds are heavily present in protein-containing food and can serve as a food quality indicator. Part of the biogenic amine family is spermidine as well. Together with other biogenic amines like putrescine and cadaverine, Spermidine can react with the nitrates that are present in food and produce carcinogenic nitrosoamine compounds. Therefore, their detection in uh, food is extremely important. Even though there are uh, commercial techniques like chromatography and ELISA that enable the detection of these compounds, a fast detection uh, technique is heavily needed. Therefore, the aim of uh, this work was to interface biology and electronics in order to de develop a label free, easy to use and low cost biosensing device for fast detection of spermidine. Here, we propose a combination of a transducer device with a biorecognition element, such as anti-spermidine antibodies, to achieve a selective uh, detection towards the spermidine. In order to develop an electrolyte gated carbon nanotube field effect biosensor. In the next slide, I will present to you the fabrication of, uh, of our devices. First, we have started with the fabrication of the interdigitated source and drain together with the planar gold gate electrode. All the electrodes have been fabricating, microfabricated, using a, a single step of uh, negative lithography followed by a, a thermal evaporation of a chromium and gold, and finally the lift-off uh, process. In the figure one, you can see an S-fabricated flexible planar electrolyte gated field effect uh, transistor onto a, a flexible polyamide substrate. The advantage of our structure is uh, that uh, here we have a planar gold gate electrode, and there is no need to use an external reference electrode, which makes the measurements much easier. In order to finish with the fabrication of the device, a semiconducting channel is required. For this work, we have decided to work with the semiconducting carbon nanotubes due to their outstanding electrical and mechanical properties. For this, we have prepared a carbon nanotube solution using carbomethyl cellulose as a surfactant. In order to have uh, the desired semiconducting properties of the nanotube, the solution was diluted 1 to 30 in 1.3 millimolar carbomethyl cellulose. To deposit the nanotubes onto our electrolyte gated field effect transistor structures, we have used spray coater. In order to have a high quality of this <coughs> the film, we have optimized several parameters of the spray coater, such as the nozzle to substrate distance, the hot plate temperature, and the speed of spraying. In the figure two, you can see an optical microscope picture of the thin film spray coated of, on the polyamide substrate. Afterwards, a post-treatment of the spray coated film is required. The devices have been immersed in 2.9 millimolar of uh, nitric acid, <clears throat> and followed by a water bath treatment. And finally, a temperature treatment for one hour at 100 degrees Celsius. The treatment with the acid would introduce to the nanotubes a doping effect and hence increase their conductivity, while the water treatment makes sure to remove all the CMC residuals that might be in the film, because the CMC in the segment conducting nanotubes acts as an insulator. In the figure three, you can see an, uh, micrograph of, an atomic force micrograph <coughs> of the spray coated uh, single wall carbon nanotube on the flexible devices. After, after uh, this final uh, step, the devices have been ready to be electrically characterized. The device characterization was performed in one millimolar uh, PBS. 
both transfer and output curves were recorded. In the figure 4a, uh, you can see the transfer characteristic. You can see the transfer characteristic, both uh, <coughs> the forward and the backward uh, uh, graphs, graphs have been uh, recorded using a gate to source voltage of 0 0.8 up to minus 0 0.8 volt, while the drain to source voltage was kept constant at the value of minus 0 0.1 uh, volt. From the transfer characteristic, we've been able to uh, to extract an on-off ratio of 190 ampere per ampere, while the threshold voltage was zero volt. Another thing important to mention here is that the gate current remained at least two orders of magnitude lower than the drain current. Next, we have uh, recorded uh, the output characteristics as well, where the drain to source voltage was swept from zero to minus 0 0.6 volt, for different uh, gate to source voltages, starting from 0 0.2 up to minus 0 0.8 volt. From both of these uh, transfer and output characteristics, we have noticed a typical p-type behavior of the electrolyte gated carbon nanotube field effect transistor. After device characterization, we have proceeded with the biofunctionalization of the device. In order to achieve a specific detection towards pyrimidine, the our devices have been functionalized with uh, anti spermidine antibodies. In order to have a control amount of the uh, antibodies immobilized in the carbon nanotube channel, we have uh, used a PSE linker molecule. This molecule contains two different functional, functional groups. The first one is uh, the benzene rings that will be uh, attached to the nanotubes due to the strong PP interaction while the other NHS ester <coughs> group it's uh, free, remains free to bond with the NH2 group of the antibodies. After introducing the PSE molecule into the uh, carbon nanotube channel, next we have uh, drop casted 10 microliters of uh, antispermidine antibodies and incubated them overnight to achieve the immobilization of antibodies into the carbon nanotube channel. After these incubation steps, the device has been ready to be tested for different concentration of spermidine. We have tested uh, our devices for spermidine detection in uh, the range of uh, concentration starting from 0 0.01 to 100 nanomolar of the uh, spermidine concentration, <laughs> where we have recorded the transfer curve. The transfer curve have been recorded successfully increasing the concentration of the spermidine, only waiting five minutes between each measurement in order to give the device time to get stable and the ions to get rearranged. As you see from the graph of 5a, with the increased concentration of the spermidine, there was a decrease in the ID current. The decrease in the ID current is due to the formation of an immunocomplex as a result of, of the interaction of anti-spermidine antibodies with the addition of the spermidine uh, concentrations. Our results in decreasing in the drain current are in the line with the results presented by Belkhazam and the others. They as well have seen a reduced in the drain current due to the increased concentration of the analyte. We've been able to construct a calibration curve as a function of the spermidine concentration and the normalized response. We have found a linear response in the range of 0.01 to 100 nanomolar of spermidine. The linearity is represented with a coefficient of determination as high as 99.83%. While the sensitivity of the, our sensor, which is represented by the slope of the calibration curve, is 1.03 microampere per decade. From this work, we can uh, conclude that uh, we have publicated and characterized electrolyte gated carbon nanotube field effect transistors. The device has shown p type behavior with an on off ratio of 190 ampere per ampere. Our biosensor was able to detect spermidine in range of 0 0.01 to 100 nanomolar. The results that we have already obtained are promising. Uh, for these devices to be used as a label free biosensor for detection of spermidine, but other toxicants as well. On the other hand, more research is needed to 
determine the stability time, selectivity, and the mechanical stability of the sensor. Thank you very much all for attending this uh, presentation. If you have any question, please feel free to address to any of the authors in the paper. Specifically, if you have any question regarding chemistry, please contact me. While if you have any concern regarding engineering part of the paper, please uh, address to my colleague, Mattia Petrelli. Thank you. <laughs>